came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts, as he did, and said to the man which had the withered hand, rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Then Jesus said unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? And looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, stretch forth thy hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored whole as the other. So far in the scripture. Verse 10 says, And looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth your hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored whole as the other. And his hand was restored whole as the other. I want to talk to you today from the subject. There's another side to me. There is, tell somebody, there is, there is. another side to me. There's another side. Because everybody has two sides. I think everybody has two sides. You got your, your weekday side and you got your Sunday side. You got your Sandy face, and you got your Sunday face. You got the side you want everybody to see. Then you got that side you don't want nobody to really know. You got the, 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 the side that's, you know there's something wrong, but you kind of like it kind of fits you. You've learned to acclimate to it. You've adapted to the other side. And even though people don't know much about it, you know about it. You know something about it. And this entire text, what I found while reading it, is it's dealing with another side of this man who is in church but he got two sides Amen. he's in church but he has two sides he's relating to people the two sides he creates relationships with people but he can't create an authentic relationship because one of his sides is not right. And it's showing to everybody in the church. <coughs> Relationships. I found, and I did some research and some, some study and some reading that most of business relationships are built with a handshake. They are solidified with a handshake. Psychologists say that you can tell a lot about a person by the way they shake your hand. Do they have a firm handshake? Is it weak? Do they look at you in your eye when you shake the hand? Remember, I had a job and, and I was taking over supervisory position. 
and the lady I was taking over, she was training me, and, and there was another worker there, and she says, don't trust him. I said, what did he do? She said, don't trust him. She said, he's a good worker, but I don't trust him. I said, why? She says, he never looks at me in my eye. And I couldn't realize that. I started speaking to him. I said, he talks, and he'll look to the side. And you need eye contact. When you shake my, when we're having a conversation, you got to look at me sometimes. Or there's something you're hiding. You're not being as honest as you could be. And the shaking of the hand is normally done with the right hand. It's the hand of covenant. When you wave your hand, you normally raise your right hand. Right-handed people raise their right hand. Left-handed people raise their right hand. It is the hand you are accustomed. It, 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 it's, it's innate. No one taught you to raise your right hand. You just raise it. No one taught you to shake people's hand with your right hand. You, you, you learned it. You, you, you pitch your hand and you grab the hand. You look me in my face and you shake my hand. Most business decisions <coughs> or covenants or, or, or deals are done with the handshake. Before they sign the contract, the contract is usually the formality. We've already stated the specifics of the contract. Verbally, Amen. then we shook on it, and when we shook on it, that was it. Amen. After that, we gave it to the attorneys and the lawyers, and they just wrote down what we said. Amen. And we already signed it and it made covenant through a handshake. Amen. And in the business world, if you go back on a handshake, you got a bad reputation. Because we sat down and set a deal up and we, 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 we ate together and we looked out of eye and we shook hands when we left that boardroom. But when you got to your attorney, you said no deal. So now I can't trust you, not because of the contract, but because you went, you, you went another way after the handshake. That's why in church we said, shake your neighbor hand. Amen. And folks, we don't, I don't want to touch my hand. One lady even said, I don't like touching people. So we, we cause you to shake it. it. It forms relationships. It forms bonds. It, and I, I know some people get overzealous and, and you know, shook 20 hands through the whole ceremony. But, but we kind of get you to create a family. Amen. Create a circle of safety is what we said. If I shake your hand now, I, I, I feel like I kind of know you. We have a bond of sorts. Because we shook hands and, and you, you greet someone, you shake their hand. You, you, I, can, I can, the world calls it energy. That's I can feel your energy. I can discern your spirit. Right. Like the world calls it energy, I call it spirit. I can tell something about you by shaking your hand. Amen. You greet people and you, you look them in the eye and, and you shake their hand and you ask God, tell what I need to know about this deal, this person, this relationship, all through shaking of the hand. The right hand of God is what the Bible calls it. it doesn't talk about God's left hand. It talks about God's right hand. That's terror dominion. The right hand of God. God's right hand refers to God's omnipotence. Omnipotence, that is a powerful word. Omnipotence, I don't think we, I don't think we really stop and exegete, take apart, uh, 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 decipher, dissect the omnipotence of God. Omnipotence, omni, the omni, omni means all. Omni means whatever you need is right here. 
Omni. We stayed at the Omni Hotel. It was absolutely powerful. Omni. Potence. Power. So I said, omnipotent power. He is omnipotent. He, he has all power. Everything is inclusive in his power. Amen. Everything about God is powerful. It's not like you can sneak up on God. It's not like God don't know what you're going through. It's not like God, the God knew what you was going through last week, this week, and next week. God knows what you're going through 10 years from now. He is omnipotent. He has all power. You can't trick God. You can't run up on God. You can't post up on God. He is all powerful. He is powerful. I'm talking do do the message. Susie all powerful. He is power. I'm talking. Power. Do you understand how much power God got? Power. He creates universes and, and galaxies. And for you to think we're the only ones that ever existed, you're absolutely crazy. There is somebody else out there. He is too powerful just to create six billion people. Artificial intelligence. There's nothing artificial about it. God is all powerful. He does what he wants, when he wants to. God knows all about you. It's called power. He's omnipotent and it's in his right hand. His right hand has all power. His right hand. God, God saved us with his right hand. God filled us with his right hand. God, God healed you with his right hand. All power. The Bible says it's in the right hand. Ownership. It represents power, 
represents control. It represents rulership. It represents authority, sovereignty, blessings, and strength. All of that is in one hand. It is the hand of blessing. Your right hand. When they, when, when they consecrate bishops, they, they, they give the bishop all his attire. And they give him a, 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 a crozier. That is, that is his, his long crozier he holds in his hand. And, and it has the hook on the end, which represents he's a shepherd. And has a, 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 a spike on one side. And he's supposed to fight off the enemy with one hand. And he takes the other side and he pulls the sheep back in. But they get out of order. But he is told to hold it in his left hand. Because you leave your right hand freely to bless people. You don't hold your staff in your right hand. You hold it in your left. Because at any moment's notice, I might need to bless you. I might need to, I see something on you. I see cancer on you. I see divorce creeping in your house. And I got to leave my right hand on your head and tell the enemy, you got to get out that house. You got to get out that marriage. You got to go back to hell where you came from. It's in my right hand. Right hand, how, and I don't care how, how little you are, there's a power in your right hand. I remember getting slapped by my mama with her right hand. I thought she was weak. I thought, oh, she, she ain't that big. Every now and then, power in my mind, too. I still got power in my right hand. There is power. There's a blessing. Not only is there a blessing in the right hand, there's strength, y'all. God got more strength in his right pinky than President Trump got in all the world. God got more strength in his right pinky than anybody has. His more healing in his right thumb than all of Kings County. There is strength in the hand of God. Yes. He says in Exodus 16, 15, in six, he says, your right hand, O oh Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand shatters the enemy. His right hand shatters my enemy. When I go through hell, uh, it's, uh, it's, my, it's his right hand uh, that causes the enemy uh, to fall back. Uh, when I got trouble, it's his right hand uh, that gets me out of trouble. Uh, when I get myself in trouble, his right hand pulls me out of trouble. Yes. Mm. <sighs> Jesus says, he says, henceforth you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming upon the clouds. You stretch forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them. Something about the right hand. It is so powerful. It is so, 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 so uh, uh, awesome uh, that in Jewish iniquity, uh, 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 even now, uh, the right men get dressed with their right hand. My God. They, they, they get dressed in their right hand. They, they put the right sleeve on first. Then the left. When they put their pants on, uh, they put the right leg in first. Then the left. Because they understand the power of the right side. They understand that if my father has power, it is in his right hand. And I come from the father. And I got the DNA of the father. Then I'm supposed to act like the father. I put the right before anything. I know it sounds stupid. And it don't make no sense. But every now and then, you got to put your right leg first. Every now and then, you put your right arm first. Because I'm mimicking the father. There's power in the right side. There's power in the right side. But if all that is true, then we got a problem. If all of that, what I just said, is true, if all of that, 
all that Jewish and, uh, and, and, and antiquity and all that, all that, all that stuff about God's right hand and all that stuff about the right hand and business and shaking hands with the right hand. Then we got a real problem with this text. Because we come and find a man with a problem. He has an issue. The Bible doesn't even tell us his name. It doesn't, doesn't tell us his personality, his pedigree, his, his resume. It just says he got a problem. And sometimes people define you by your problem. They don't care to know your name. You know the one with three kids and no husband? Hey, they know you by your problem. You know the man who ain't got no job? They define you by your problem. You know the one living? He ain't never got nothing. They don't ask you your name, but they know your problem. We come across this man. He, he has... He has a problem. He's a man without authority. And that might not mean much to y'all, but you take a man's, take away his authority, you, 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 you kind of, you kind of cut him down. And take away his authority. When you, when you, when you take away a man's, his, his power. You cut him down. He, he's a man in the text who has a withered hand. His hand is withered. He doesn't have the right hand. The expression, the tangible expression of his power, the tangible expression of his authority, the tangible expression of who God made him to be. God made him to be the head and not the tail. But he's sitting in church with no right hand. How can I make a deal? How can I shake hands? How can I cut covenants? And I don't have a right hand. I have no more power. I have no authority. And guess what? Everybody knows. And it's easy to deal with a problem when people don't know about it. It's easy for you to come here and look all pretty and shout and put your wig on and your girdle and look like you ain't got no problems. But what happens when everybody knows your problem? Can you really handle everybody knowing your weaknesses? Can you really handle it? If everybody knew you had a problem with porn, a problem with lust, you had a problem with your money, a problem with your back, because everybody got a good marriage till they get in that car. Mm. Yeah. That backseat can talk. Come on, baby. Good, good night, Saints. We sure had a time and day. God is good. You get on my nerve. Why'd you say that? Why'd you have to do that? Why'd you do that? Why you up all in her face? I ain't, I ain't never, I ain't never, I guess y'all, yeah, y'all yeah, perfect, y'all never had no problem with that. Are you talking to me like that in public? You, you embarrassing me, you embarrassing me. <laughs> and then one of the saints ride up on Linden Boulevard. <laughs> but everybody knows your problem. It's hard. And this is how you defeat that. You need to tell people your problem. Some folks be transparent about so that way the enemy can't expose you or, or, or extort you. You can't tell folks what I'm going through. I already told them. I took them to the altar. I'm not ashamed. I got problems. I got issues. It don't matter. I came to be delivered. I came to church to get delivered. I came to church to be baptized. I came to church to be free. I didn't come here to play no games. I'm tired of acting phony. I'm tired of being an actor. I'm tired of being a hypocrite. I came to church to let all this garbage out and ask God to God free me. Yeah. To 
many folks coming to hell acting like you got it going on? Why was you going to put there if ain't nothing wrong with you? So they treat us like, ain't nothing wrong with me. I just, I like sitting in the hospital. I like coming here. Absolutely not. I can't because I'm crazy. I can't because I got a problem. I got a drug problem. I got a drinking problem. I got a lust problem. I got to get myself together. We come to church acting uh, like ain't nothing wrong with us. Uh, we come acting uh, like we got it all together. Uh, like God anointed us straight out the matrix. Uh, like God anointed us. Uh, like as soon as we came out, your mama, you had a halo and a bunch of wings. Uh, absolutely not. Uh, I was a mess. Uh, I was naughty by nature. Uh, you couldn't leave your wallet around me. Uh, I was jacked up. Uh, you have people like that. Don't leave your wallet around them. Don't leave your man around them. Don't leave your wife around them. Yeah, yeah. One of the hoes. And such was some of you. Yeah. And such were such was some of you. I got some family. I won't leave my wife around to this day. <laughs> Not because I don't trust her. I don't trust them. And, and I'm too small and pretty to go to jail. <laughs> you be watching the body draws out. I'm, I'm, tell, I'm telling you now. <laughs> the man is in church. He in church. With a withered hand. He is in church. With a withered hand. But here's the issue. Weathering is a process. It is. It is. It didn't say he was born with a withered hand. He had a withered hand. Weathering takes time. Weeks, months, and years. So if you would actually come and sit up in God's house and wither away, you would actually come every Sunday and not eat the feast of the Lord is prayer, the God is here and you would actually wither away and you came every Sunday and you let your spirit wither now that's a problem absolutely not if I'm going to come here if I'm going to get my money if I'm going to come here I'm going to get up early in the morning I'm going to get dressed then I'm going to give God what I'm tied to because I need something from the Lord why sit you here and die why would I come here and wither? Why would I be in the house of God and wither? Why would I come here and not sing? Why would I come here? This ain't Madison Square Garden. This ain't the Barclays. This is God's house. Open your mouths, all ye people. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Yeah. He withers right in the church, y'all. He's with us right in the church. And the Bible says that Jesus goes into their synagogue. And I'm kind of I'm kind of confused. He goes into their church. Not his church. It's their church. It's not his church. Because you got two different churches today. You got God's church and you got our church. Because in our church, we do whatever we want to do. In our church, we say whatever we want to say. Whatever comes to our mind. In our church, nobody gets healed. Nobody gets delivered. Nobody gets set free. In our church, we dance all night. In our church, we are the order. But in God's church, there's healing. There's power. There's breakthrough. There's an anointing. There's favor. I don't want to go to that church. I want to go to God's church. God's church is different than their church. Because in our church, if we don't dance, we have church. Oh, my God. I call that a club. That's a club. That's a 
club. Because if I ain't dance, if I go to a club and the DJ ain't spin my song, uh, I didn't have a good time. Because part of being at a club is that I dance. Part of being in that atmosphere is my flesh is tickled uh, and my nature is plucked up. Uh, and now I gotta dance uh, and I gotta do what I gotta do. Uh, but when you come to God's house, uh, God ain't asking you to dance. Uh, God asking you to change. Ain't nothing wrong with a good dancer. Uh, ain't nothing wrong with a good one around. Uh, ain't nothing wrong with a good shout. Uh, but we ain't come to church to dance. Uh, we came to get delivered. Uh, we came to be set free. Uh, we came to get help. Yeah. He's withering right in the church. And like it or not, you got marriages that wither right in the church. You got marriages that wither right in the church. We get the same song. We get the same word. We in the same prayer. We in the same consecration. But we can't get along. I'm trying to figure out uh, why would the Holy Ghost uh, give us the same word uh, and I'm not like you? Uh, why would the Holy Ghost uh, give us the same anointing uh, yet we can't speak to one another? One of us is wrong. One of us. One of us is wrong. Uh, how about this? Uh, both of us is out of order. Right in right the church. He with her. In the church, relationships with her. In the church, friendships with her. In the church, the withering of things happen right in the church, and we don't do nothing about it. You see folks backsliding, and you won't even see nothing. I'm going to mind my business. I ain't gonna, I'm only here for me. That is selfish. You are out of order. Am I my brother's keeper? Absolutely. You got to have a guard on you to say you are out of order. I love you. I'm pulling you out of hell. Why you ain't been in church? Why you ain't in prayer line? You got to get yourself together. And that's what kills me. My folks backslide. And somebody say, I knew they was leaving. I knew they was leaving. I just knew it. But did you say something? Uh, did you say something? Uh, even MTA said, uh, when you said something, uh, say something. How do I know you're about to die? I won't even say nothing. Is there something inside of us uh, where we want to be better than the folks? Uh, so we rather let them die. Yeah, right, we let the enemy steal from them. Uh, let the enemy sift them like we do. Uh, and we don't say nothing. Uh, if you tired, uh, I'm going to try everything I can uh, to pull you back. You need CPR. Christ provides restoration. Help me help you. <laughs>